Hey, this is Larry Janeski from Dr. Energy Saver. Today we're going to be talking about insulating foundation walls and more particularly insulating them with uh, polyurethane spray foam. Uh, here we have a stone wall and you know a basement space is pretty easy to heat and cool because most of it is underground, uh, it's tempered, and we don't have a big uh, temperature difference between inside and the soil, maybe 15, 20 degree difference, uh, but above ground we do have a big temperature difference and um, foundations are made of stone or concrete and they're dense materials, they're thermally conductive and heat goes from more to less so heat will travel right through that dense uninsulated uh, foundation material right to the outside. So it's easy to keep a basement heated if we can prevent it from leaking and houses have lower air pressure at the bottom. They suck air in at the bottom and the houses blow air out at the top. So we're, we're concerned about air being sucked into the bottom uh, in the wintertime, freezing cold air. And so here we see a stone uh, foundation wall. And stone walls, of course, are just uh, individual stones with some mortar in between and they're imperfect and they leak a lot of air. And so we would need to prevent this uh, stone wall from leaking air in the wintertime. We also need to insulate it. And as you can see, it's a really rough surface. It's about the same on the inside. And um, uh, the best way to insulate this would be with polyurethane spray foam, which we're going to show you. Now, here we have an addition onto the house, more modern. And this is poured concrete walls. Now, poured concrete doesn't leak air. But the issue with poured concrete, again, it's very dense and it needs to be insulated. Let's take a look at block walls. This is a block wall foundation and block walls are uh, one big honeycomb of airspace with the uh, cavities they have in them. And of course, they're very porous. So air goes right through a block wall uh, and it could bring moisture with it uh, from the ground. But the issue with block walls is just like stone walls, air leakage and insulation both. While we're here insulating the foundation walls with spray foam, we're also gonna insulate the rim joist area. The rim joist is the perimeter of the floor framing that sits on top of the foundation and it leaks lots of air and it is not insulated either. Here we are inside the basement and we can see the rim joist is on top of the foundation wall and it has penetrations for pipes and ducts and wires and so forth. There's pipes and wires going up through the exterior wall where air can flow from the basement up into the wall cavity into the attic. We have the junction between the sill plate which is the the framing member that sits on top of the foundation wall. There's a gap between the top of the foundation wall and the sill plate, between the sill plate and the rim joist, between the rim joist and the subfloor, at gaps in the rim joist and at any penetrations such as a pipe for your sill cock, for your hose through the rim joist, the uh, air conditioning lines through there, any fuel lines through the rim joist, and your electricity uh, service line. These are all holes that got drilled in the rim joist that leak as well. So while we're here, we are going to seal uh, the foundation uh, from the foundation floor all the way to the subfloor, including the sill plate and the rim joist. By insulating the foundation walls and the rim joist, we're gonna make all the floors in the house on the first floor warmer, especially at the perimeter and especially tile floors like in kitchens, bathrooms, uh, hard floors like laminate floors and hardwood are really gonna be improved by this work. Now this homeowner had put this uh, bubble wrap uh, vapor barrier on these stone walls on the inside. And one of the things that we see, uh, and this gets a lot worse, the homeowner tells us, is that in the uh, inside, this uh, vapor barrier is inflated, you see? And it's inflated because there's air leakage through the stone wall. And the customers told us in the winter time, I mean, it bubbles out. Uh, you know, four or five inches as much as it possibly can. So we know that there's lower air pressure in the basement and that uh, illustrates our stack effect and it also shows us that there's air leakage, air available coming through the stone wall to inflate this vapor barrier. Spraying this volume of polyurethane uh, foam is no easy task. We have this big rig, which is uh, almost as big as the house, <laughs> that we have to pull up to be able to do this and get the results that, uh, almost miraculous results that two-part spray foam gives us. I wanna show you what's in this, uh, in this truck. And first of all, if we go in here, this is a bulkhead and behind here is a four-cylinder diesel engine. I mean, this thing could power any truck or any bulldozer or excavator. This is a big power plant in here 
and it's hard to see in this compartment but you have a big compressor and a big generator to power all this equipment. We also have our urethane pump and we have part A and part B being pumped through here in exact proportions at the exact right temperature and the exact pressures because we need A and B to go together 50-50 uh, exactly in order to get the proper reaction of the foam. And um, we have uh, 300 feet uh, of heated hose and inside this hose there is a uh, hose for A, part A, a hose for part B. There is an air hose which we need at the gun. There is uh, uh, two uh, heater wraps to keep the material hot because uh, it has to be at the right temperature. The guns that we use, the spray guns, are uh, $2,000 guns just in themselves. They're uh, in incredible pieces of equipment. Here we have a, a pump to pump our coatings and uh, a hose and gun just for any coatings that we may have to put over the foam. We have uh, another transfer pump for our coatings. Here we have our Part A drums and our Part B drums and we have transfer pumps which are air driven to move the material to the pump and uh, we have a whole boatload of uh, uh, hose here for our coatings. So there's a lot of equipment inside this uh, truck to make uh, the result that we get for the homeowner inside the house. And of course, with all this specialized equipment, you can't run it with somebody you hired yesterday. We have uh, our team of uh, specially trained experts here running the rig today. There's Ken and Joe. Closed cell polyurethane foam has a superior R value of R7 per inch, which is absolutely amazing. We only need a couple inches on the basement walls for a great result. It reacts and expands, filling all the little gaps and voids to stop air leakage and insulate. When Dr. Energy Saver sprays two-part polyurethane foam in your home, you need to leave the house because there is some fumes that come off the polyurethane as we spray it and the polyurethane sets up very quickly within uh, 10 seconds or so and in about a minute or so you can knock on it it, it is hard closed cell spray foam is is cured uh, but the area needs to be ventilated for some time after that so the homeowner and any pets need to leave the house while we're doing the work if we're going to leave closed cell spray foam exposed in a basement we need to put a thermal barrier on it and here we're spraying a thermal barrier. It looks like a heavy white paint, it's a special coating, over the spray foam to provide that thermal barrier. Closed cell spray foam is ideal for the leaky, rough surface of the inside of stone walls. For block walls or poured walls, there's other types of insulation that could be used, board foams uh, of different types that uh, can be used in your basement. Your Dr. Energy Saver uh, representative will tell you what's best for you. If you have a home that you'd like to make more comfortable, more energy efficient, like we've done to this one today, uh, call Dr. Energy Saver. would love to come out, do a complete evaluation, find out what your goals are, and help you achieve them.